Hey, it's a Wolf. There are very few Dark Oak farms for Bedrock Edition, and none that I've found that break things down enough for you to change the timings and set it up the way that you want it to do. So that's what I'm built here, and that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. So the reason I came up with this modification on the Zolson farm is because his sort of worked, um, as long as I was on a reasonably high-end device. And this one allows you to slow it right the way down. Problem I was finding with Zolson's farm is if there was any lag at all, it was breaking the entire thing and I was sick of having to rebuild it. So I've built this in a way that you can modify for your own needs, slow it down as required, or you could speed it up, I guess. So if you want to build this, Silent Whisper has got a great tutorial for this section here. You basically just go up until he starts into the roof just leave the roof off now i've put these blocks here there's a one block gap between where these walls are that stops the dark oak from growing any taller so this maximizes the height of the dark oak without having to worry about an extra whole set of walls so let's show it in action when i flip this switch it's going to bone meal then that is when it grows up it's going to complete that circuit and then start off the farm but we'll see what it looks like from inside bone mealing got the farm then the side walls are going to come in just one and they're going to pull out then one side and then the far side's going to do double piston extension and then we've got the corners it's going to pull those out and then again, it's going to activate just one time and then double piston, double piston and the corners. And then these are going to double piston extend now. So you can see everything works in sequence. See how it drags that one out double and then the corner is going to grab these and pull that all the way in. And then double piston extension. And even if there's nothing in here, it's still going to activate this so that everything still runs. So that's going to go over there, pull it in, and it's going to sit there. Now it's ready to go again. So what happens when these walls double piston extend? The redstone will then go across here, which then activates these pistons and pushes them out there to our cubers. Let's take a look how this works. So over here, we have this system. So when we flick the lever, it turns this on, which starts a clock right there, which is for the bone meal. So when the tree grows, we've got to drop this block down here, which will cut the redstone line to the main and also turn off the clock. So the way that we do that, basically the line comes through here, hits this piston, which is just a regular piston, Hits this piston, which pushes it into here and depowers all that. And then once the whole system has finished, we send a redstone pulse up here, which then activates this piston, which then turns the whole thing back on. So let's reorient. While the saplings are being bone milled, we've got a constant pulse coming through here. When the tree grows, it then connects the redstone line and that sends a pulse through there. comes down here etc etc comes to this contraption now we could just have it so that it goes straight in to here but i found that with there's a bedrock i guess it's a bug but it's been in for so long that uh, it's probably a feature but there's a inconsistency as to which gets powered first and as a result we have it so that it goes into here to start this into here which turns which pushes these up and then turns off the farm, which we just saw, and then turns off the signal. Now, the reason we want to push this up is so that the logs that generate here get pushed up one block so that these walls can impact it. So here we are. The tree has caused a pulse to go through here. What we have with the one, two, three repeaters on four ticks, we need to send a 12 game tick pulse through the system. Now it needs to be 12 game ticks. Uh, that's the minimum I've found to activate each of the walls. So the 12 game ticks you want the pistons to activate. If you're having problems where the walls aren't activating for long enough, just extend this, make that longer. So we've got 
12 game ticks comes into here and then this is the brains of the operation. I've added in extra repeaters because I wanted to really slow it down because there were some times where it was having all kinds of lag issues. So the 12 game tick pulse comes through here, fires off this side, fires off this side, fires off this side, and I'll get to what all those are, and fires off this side, etc, etc. So I need this system to go four times. The way that I control that is down here. We have this setup where the line comes into this, this sticky piston, which is connected to this observer. Observer's facing this way. Every time that pulses, it pulses this torch, which allows an eye one item to move through all of these. When the system's off, we want this item here. And then when it gets around to the far side, so once it's moved all the way around here, you can see these, these hoppers all connect to each other in a circle or rectangle. But once the item is in here, it sends the signal into this block, this here, we've got another shut off one. It's annoying that I have to do this extra stuff for it, but that's what works. So this sends the signal that turns the entire farm back on. The reason why I've got so many repeaters here is because when this fires, it still has another cycle to go. So however many, so however many repeaters you have on this square here, that's how many repeaters and the timings that you need along here. You can go more, but don't go less. If you don't get that right, then the farm will turn back on while the walls are still going, which uh, will cause issues, particularly in AFK mode. So once the cycle has gone through four times, the item will be here, which sends the signal, which drops this block here, which as the last time it comes through, this block will be down as it comes through the last time it will move it on and push this block up which allows it to be ready for the next time but it stops it from going more than four times so then what does each section do as it comes through here the first one to fire comes over here now as we saw we need the side walls which is this one here calling those the side side walls need to fire first and the first two times that the side walls fire, they need to fire a single piston extension. And the next two times they need to fire double piston extension, you know, just to complicate things. <laughs> so the way, way that we get that to work, first two times, the signal comes through here. And I've got the extra repeaters here because we need the same amount of repeaters going to the far side as to the near side because both of them go at the same time. So this fires into this side, which pushes up just one side uh, to do the double piston extension. We fire it in from the far side, which fires both of them, which does the double piston extension. And that is a feature from Zolson's farm. So we have two times comes through to do the single piston extension. And at the same time as it fires off, it's also sending through to a counter. Same setup as the one we have down there, but we have three redstone dust on this one because we need to count differently. And I've got two comparators coming out straight into two repeaters into here because we want it to fire when there's an item the item will go here and then here and when it does that we want this to fire there's a sticky piston here so when there's an item in either of these hoppers it sends a signal to this sticky piston which extends and blocks the flow there but it redirects down to here and these signals here go to the far side to the double extension So they come underneath here and fires into this side, which with this redstone dust here causes both of them to extend, which is the double piston extension from Zolson's farm. So that's the side walls. Those are honestly the most complicated of all of them because we need to get the two. So then we have both the front and the back. We've just gone through the side walls, these two. Now we're going to look at the front activation and then the back activation. Now because of the way that the dark oak 
may grow, we don't want to activate both at the same time. You might have noticed that the back one was actually pushing blocks through to the far side, and that's exactly what we want. If you activate both at the same time, then there's a good chance that neither of them will activate properly. So we want to activate one, then the other, and I've chosen to activate what I'm calling the front, and then the back. So that goes all the way out, all the way back, and then this one goes all the way out, all the way back. So, as the signal comes through here, so it's gone there, it's done all its thing, we've got enough repeaters in here slowing things down so that, remember it's a 12 game tick pulse, and I've also factored in that I've had to use a couple of repeaters to get the signal uh, long enough to get to the walls, and then a bit of extra wiggle room. So it comes through here, so the line literally goes straight through, and then climbs this glass thing. And we have one activation which activates this whole piston wall at once. So that one activates the front wall. Comes through here, activates the front wall. Goes through here which does the same thing to the back wall. And then it comes here, which comes, which goes to what I'm calling the corners. These sticky pistons here are the corners. So they double extend and double retract. So it comes out and up and up and up. And we've got the extra repeaters here because I needed to add in enough repeaters to get them to the far side. So all it does is send a signal through to these two sticky pistons, which in combination with the honey and slime and the observers causes the sticky pistons here to double extend. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Everything else is just these cubers. So it just, this standard cubing. So it comes out, fires across, once it gets to the far side, it activates this wall, which the observers observe, and then pulses it out. So I've done it so that it just activates two at a time. Cubas, you can do however you like. Once it's done its final loop, the item is going to be in here, which then runs through here, down into this line, goes all the way through here come to the far side and it pushes this piston here now these two have to be pistons we don't want them to be sticky pistons because we want to shove this block around and that's pretty much all there is to it as you can see I cleared out a lot of the redstone that was in the Zolson build mainly because I didn't need it so the last thing to show is the AFK mode the whole system that Zolson built for AFK that all still works causes a clock to go here there's a redstone dust on top of this block so it's a fairly simple system so we've got a dropper there Dropper there, the hopper lines that were in Zolson's build, those all still do that for this one. And then when you're ready, you can turn on the AFK mode and it will feed you saplings. So let's show that in action. Tree's grown, we've got a signal, comes out to the side, now heading to, oh, to the back and the corners, and then to the side, and the front, and the back, and the corners. And now you can see that the side has been cut, so it's now going to double side, front, and back, and corners, and it's going to hit the double piston extension again, 
stops that. This is the last sequence. Probably can't see on this angle, but it's dropped down the target block so nothing further can go through. And we're back. Ready to go for the next one. Let's do it again, just looking at the brain. Signal comes in, activates the side walls, then the front wall, the back wall, and then the corners. Side single, front, back, corners, and we notice that we've gone to a double, front, back, corners, and again on the double, front, back, and corners, and that target block has dropped down now, so it then stops and doesn't continue. Signal then travels to the front, pushes the redstone block and restarts the bone mill for the whole sequence to start again. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to do this as a tutorial step by step. If there's enough interest, I'll do a full video walkthrough step by step from the start. And I'll put a link in the description and in the pinned comment.